Hey, 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 how are you? I hope you survived the Thanksgiving holidays if you celebrated it. And if you didn't, you're probably doing just fine. And I am excited to chat with you, check in with you, see how you're doing and talk about how you're going to fit one more ball into all the ones you're already juggling. <laughs> So my name is Heather Dumas. If you're not familiar with me, I am a personal trainer, nutrition and lifestyle coach, and I specialize in helping female leaders prioritize self care without sacrifice. And that is why we are talking about juggling a million balls right now. I often get asked when I am um, talking to potential clients, new clients, you know, people online, I get asked, you know, how, how I can expect them to possibly fit anything else in their already crazy busy life, you know, how they can um, possibly plan meals that their family will eat or do all the things they want to do and not sacrifice time from their work or from their family. And that is why I'm my mission in life is to help you do that. I want you to understand that you can prioritize your self care. You can plan healthy meals and cook them and eat them. And you can do it while still doing all the other things. So um, I would love to hear if you feel like you're already doing that. So um, feel free to engage with me either right now, or if you're catching this on a replay, then shoot me a DM on social and let me know how many balls you're juggling right now. <laughs> because I know I have a lot more in the air this time of year than I normally do. Um, in the off season, I saw, I called, I like to call it between November and April is kind of like my crazy, my crazy life season. And we are right in the thick of it. So let's talk about a few things. Um, number one, how can you fit one more thing on your plate? And yes, the pun was intended, especially this week. <laughs> You're already stretched really thin. And I know it can feel like self-care is the, the last thing that you can handle. And it's the one thing if you put it on your plate or in your to-do list, it will take you down. Um, the key is finding a way to shuffle your schedule and make it all fit without sacrificing what is important to you. Um, that is, it's not an easy task, but it's something that I've been really successful with helping my clients do. And it takes um, taking a good hard look at where you're spending your time, uh, what your priorities are, what your goals are, and really deep diving into what's going on. <laughs> Tasha, yes, I know a whole circus full of balls. <laughs> yes, I know it. It feels like a circus, doesn't it? Doesn't it feel like it, you're in a controlled circus? My life feels like that right now. I know I was super tired this morning, but as I've made a commitment to myself to take care of myself and one of those things that I need to do is I need to get my workout in every day. And even if some other commitments or other balls that I'm juggling make me tired or make it where I only have a few minutes to get it in, or it just, I don't think I can physically do it. I make myself do it anyway for a couple of different reasons. One is to keep integrity with myself because I know if I don't keep my word to myself, I'm not likely to keep it to anybody else. And I want to be able to trust my subconscious. I want my subconscious to be able to trust me. And when I set my goals, I want my subconscious to support me. And that's something that happens when you create those habits and you continually um, say you're going to do something and then follow through. And it can be the littlest things, but if you don't continue to follow through with the things that you say you're going to do, your subconscious will start to doubt you and it will not help you. It will actually sabotage you in reaching your goals. So that's one thing is just having that, that commitment to yourself, but also 
shuffling your schedule so that you can make it fit, whether it's earlier in the morning, whether it's, you know, squeezing it in, in between other things, there's a way to make it fit if it matters to you. And self-care absolutely should matter to you, but I know you know that. So another thing is how do we do it all and not sacrifice the time from our family or our work? Um, yes, you can schedule things until you're blue in the face and you can shuffle your schedule. But when we sit down to make that schedule, if you don't sit down and figure out what your goals are and what is absolutely most important to you, you tend to fill your schedule up with things that are less important. They just kind of automatically fill in. Have you ever had a gap in your schedule and you're like, wow, I have a big space. And then at the end of the day, you can't figure out where that time went. If you don't intentionally plan it, if you don't intentionally fill it, that time will fill itself. And it usually fills itself with things that aren't very productive, <laughs> or at least it's not the stuff you wanted to be doing. So getting very clear on your goals, getting very clear on your priorities and getting very clear on where they rank, which ones are the very most important and which ones would be awesome if you reached them, but they're just not, you know, not life and death to you. Lastly, get your family on board. You are the leader of your pack whether it's a pack of furry people, <laughs> furry animals that think they're people, <laughs> or it's a pack of humans, you have to lead by example. And you don't need to complicate it. You don't need to come up with elaborate systems and elaborate rewards. And you know, you, you don't even need to tell them what you're doing. In fact, I've found that most of my clients, when they announce to their family, we're going to get healthy, <laughs> they get a less than positive response. So just lead by example and find recipes and activities that people will enjoy, your family will enjoy doing with you, but also um, that make everyone feel good. So maybe not everyone likes to exercise, but maybe we can find something that we can do together as a family that is active and fun and doesn't feel like work if we don't want to do work. Um, and then show them how good you feel and how good they feel when you all make healthier choices. Make sure you point out to them how, how awesome and strong they feel when they're doing certain activities or how, um, you know, they, they may not notice how great they feel when they eat broccoli, but they definitely will notice how great they don't feel if they overdo it on sugar. Uh, so don't be afraid to point out, hey, remember that belly ache you had on Thanksgiving night? Yeah, that was because we had a lot of pie and a lot of things that we don't normally eat. That doesn't feel very good, does it? That's why we don't eat that very often. You know, just don't make it a, too negative, but also don't be afraid to point out that, hey, our body feels good when we put it, healthy things in it and when we do healthy things with it. And remember, they do what you do, not what you say. So take advantage of that say less, do more, show them through your actions that exercise is important to you. Taking care of yourself is important to you. And if they watch you do that, they will download and imprint in their psyche that it's important to take care of yourself and your body. It's important to feed yourself healthy things. It's important to go to bed and get good rest. So at the end of the day, it can feel like you've got all these balls in the air and you're just meal planning or whatever, you just can't quite fit it in. I would encourage you to take a look at the balls you're juggling and make sure that you really do need to have all of those in the air at the same time. Then I would also encourage you to bring your tribe in closely and share with them what you're dealing with and allow them to share it with you. You can even um, allow them to help you make dinner, you know, hey, let's all pick a, a new recipe this month and give them a few to choose from. Don't just like let them go nuts, but, you know, pick a few healthy recipes. Don't tell them they're healthy <laughs> and let them choose one. Hey, which one would you guys like to make this this week? This would be fun to do as a family. Um, at the end of the day, though, you've got to figure out what you want to juggle and why you're juggling it. And then 
decide to do it because you need it. You need it above all else. Make yourself do it, whether you want to or not, <laughs> because I know you don't want to sometimes, and they will get on board with you. I know oftentimes it can feel overwhelming. You can feel like, man, if I, every time I do this, I just, I get started and I do great and then I fail and then you feel bad. The only way you're going to succeed is if you get back up and keep trying. So get back up, keep trying one step at a time, one day at a time, one ball at a time. If you watch someone juggle, you know, eight objects in the air, they're usually only touching one at a time in each hand. Um, don't quote me on that because I'm not an expert juggler. But at the end, I just want you to know that you can juggle all of these things and you can choose healthy and you can bring your family with you and they will support you and say less, do more and keep on, keep it on. If you need help, if you would like more suggestions or you're like, I just don't know where to start, shoot me a message. DM me, comment on this, where you know how to find me and let me know and let's talk and we'll figure out how to get you juggling all the balls. So have a fabulous week. Bye.